do so. R uh, yeah, I think Vi makes a lot of sense here. So, love to see what the pick is going to be to support it. Kelsey, what do you want to see TL do here? Uh, what I want to see TL do is kind of just go for a lot of the, the pushing style. So mm -hmm. they banned the Kalista, but you can still get a lot of lane power with even picks like Ash still up. Uh, the Jarvan's very interesting. I guess we're just going for the, the, the Rumble Jarvan box into the Oriana. The immobile Oriana being a little bold with Rumble picked and Jarvan there, so. I think it's a little too early. Oh! Okay. The classic. It got always. buffed and then nerfed, but still stronger. Always. True. I mean, everyone knows APA for Ziggs, but Aesol is the OG always plan ahead pick. So I'm very excited to see what he's going to do here. He made it to top. Rank one in on the NA ladder a couple years back, just play, spamming ASOL, so. It's fun, like, the conversation around Team Liquid has just been going with comfort picks that's worked well for APA, and feels like after the buff that came through for Aurelion Soul, he is finally, you know, willing to pick it out. But it's been great. Now we're seeing some real, a strong jungler that is working alongside it, because that is the real focus, is that you're going to get pushed in. It's going to be a lot of pressure early on. At least now with Zin Zhao, you can try, try to combat it, maybe get a gank off on Orianna and make her feel unsafe. Yeah, it is a lot of magic damage, but I want to pull up the champion pools of APA and Insanity, because mm -hmm. it feels like, at least in this game, they have switched roles a little bit. Insanity was the one who was playing all the off-meta stuff, but now you have the same thing on the side of APA, with Zig's picks earlier on in the year, and now the ASOL, two champions that only he has played in the LCS. So, so much diversity playing on the live patch this year. Yeah, I mean, just hearing from the members of Shopify, they're just saying we need to get Insanity off of Sion <laughs> just to pick <laughs> anything else that's not just a straight tank mid. And yeah, the fact that there's that one shared Orianna, that wasn't <laughs> even true at the beginning of this week. Absolutely, and Insanity is a funny one because you always think uh, he's the guy who's going to play the, play all the crazy stuff, but he is actually just a good fundamental player. Mm. So he can, of course, whip out the Oriana when necessary, but we'll see how he does against the pressure from the Zin Zhao, the Rumble, and then later on the Aesol. And a lot of bot lane bans, so we could still see some unique stuff here. Yesterday, Team Liquid played Taric, Kalista. It worked okay. They actually almost Taric diffed the game at certain yep. points, but then couldn't close it down the stretch. But look at this Ash, Tom Kench, Kalista, Zeri, Varus, all banned already from the bot lane. If Shopify wants to, they can go back to the Lucian Melio. It's something that worked well for them in both iterations of Bevoy and Wild Turtle. They've been comfortable playing around that style, and even though it's dropped off in the league, especially with how long the game has really gotten, it's something that they can go back to comfort with how many bands have come through here. We haven't talked about Senna, so like the hover is interesting. Yeah, and this is a situation where frequently in the new season we're seeing so many AD bans in the first phase, so dropping AD to second phase can be really risky. Uh, that coveted fourth pick spot does come out as the, the Zaya, but we already saw the Senna coming, like kind of hovered. So yeah. I'm a little surprised that we're going for the Zaya when the Senna mm. is up. Yeah, what do you, so you favor the Senna side if Yon ends up blocking the Sin. But yeah. There's also Tom Kench is blocked as a pair, so they'd have to get a little bit more creative with it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I think you can. You might even see like a center rumble, like unironically. I don't know if Core is going to oh. throw down, but we have seen some of that in other regions like LCK, LPL. So True. That's, that's, that's definitely still on the table. They're taking their time with this one. A what lot of these spawn and rain over Crook here. And also, there's. You, you can do so many things with this. I mean, like, does, I'm trying to figure out, does Shopify have enough engaged to just go send a Seraphine? Because yeah, that's the other combo. Yeah. The dirty combo we thought we got rid of in, de in week one. It's a lot of magic damage, but there's yeah. not necessarily that many great magic uh, resist buyers on Shopify. Well, so it kind of is like the classic core pick, but I don't know. We'll see if we see the difference. They're just, trick they're just tricking <laughs> up with every hover. I mean, they all make I would have liked the Seraphine. The Nautilus, though, is more core DJ. Yeah. yeah. I also think it makes sense. Like, obviously, TL have been playing way more to avoid fights, but uh, they need some kind of engage or some kind of get it out of jail free card. Yeah, and it looks like Shopify is going to be locking in the recon. One thing to watch out for in this game, though, is Team Liquid's macro game and if the laning phase even matters that much. So let's pull up their game against Cloud9 because I thought they did some lane swaps that were uh, under noticed but incredibly effective in their game against Cloud9. So this is just a really sped up version from five minutes onwards where look at the Uter in the top lane already in this clip, taking a 
early recall up here and going down bottom. And they really just make Cloud9 dizzy. They send the Aphelios top lane. You can see they're a little bit late on the return, so they get a free wave. Then they swap back early. Melee Illusion have to follow down the bot lane once again. And they kind of end up playing this game in ping pong multiple different times. It gives them free grubs that happen right here. And then Cloud9 actually gets fake. They fake themselves out because they try and run top lane. And it allows Team Liquid to get even more plates bottom, eventually leading to first turret. No combat happened in that sequence, but they got about eight plates by the end of it. So just watch out for lane swaps from Team Liquid because they've had success with it last week against Shopfire Rebellion today. That's it from the draft, though. Let's send it casters. Which is gracias, y'all. Pre yep. rework, which was a very, very different champion, and, and didn't have all the the Stardust, uh, you know, stuff going on. So we'll see him try his hand at the new and improved Aurelian Soul on Summoner's Rift. Everybody was distracted by the Ziggs buffs, and they're like, "Oh great, yeah. <laughs> ABS is gonna spam the Ziggs." But Asol here. But. I'm actually looking at the junglers because in this game, we actually have the two junglers in the LCS that have the highest forward percentage. So me and Kobe are here with stopwatches and we're gonna be competing against each other <laughs> to see, does this count? I think this counts for me. Oh, a flash away from APA as Zazel's Oof. grand entrance forces his hand. Yeah, so the, the key here is me and Emily with our stopwatches will be timing the amount of time that the jungler uh, for either team spends across the halfway point. Mm -hmm. Emily, you take Umpty. Yep. He's your favorite jungler. I will take Boogie. I'm pretty happy with taking Boogie's side after his Wukong performance yesterday. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. I think you should have like a second Probably on your yeah, you want to throw one. That on counts. There. It, it yeah, was there across the halfway point. All oh right. my goodness! Every uh, second counts here, guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I think the other big thing though is now APA's flash is blown, right? So we'll see if Boogie wants to immediately target that with the Vi. And the key point is, you know, the reason we're doing this and tracking these two junglers is because these are the two junglers that are the highest board percentages. They are some of the biggest counter junglers that we have in the LCS. Uh, they always like to get as aggressive as possible with it. And we'll see which lanes they play around. Obviously, you want to go off of your, your pushing lanes. APA starting out pushing here on Aurelian Soul, making use of those mana buffs. Yeah, and I mean, in tracking and looking at the jungle pathing, specifically for Umpty, the prep for this game, in his past two games, he's gotten onto the opposing side of the map no later than like four minutes into the game, like 4.09. So he's been up in his opponent's jungle a lot as we see him clearing out the bot side of the map. And technically this game, you got in there at like level one, so I guess, yeah, that, I, have 56. I guess that counts too. <laughs> 50 <laughs> I have almost a full second on my stopwatch already. So I think this is a really fun and cool idea, and I think I want to open it up to everyone else. So. If you're in chat, we're going to open up a poll to who you think between Umti or Boogie is going to have more forward percentage by the end of 14 minutes. As we see, Umti is going to go over this wall and I think challenge Boogie. Oh, Our yeah, flash is go. over, but Boogie was already channeling the Vault Breaker and he gets out clean. He already took the red buff. At least Umti is going to try and use the priority from impact to bully Boogie away from these crugs. This is why we're tracking Let's it. Go. Straight up flashes in there. Yeah, and you see him using that pushing pressure from the rumble that they were talking about in draft, uh, syncing up with that. Now he's going to be able to clear out the chickens as well. Uh, so this is a really good start for me. Oh, yeah. Well, might actually end up... <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. Boogie collapses on Umpty. They know he has no flash to get out. And first blood will go over to insanity. So, Team Boogie over here. I have zero seconds on my clock, but I've got one zero on the scoreboard. So, <laughs> scoreboard, Emily. <laughs> it's true. I, I'm winning this game, but losing At in what cost? the actual game. Yeah, it's a Pyrrhic victory. <laughs> Uh, honestly, though, always playing off of the pressure of your top laner. I blame Udyr for this phenomenon, where now a lot of the LCS teams have gotten more aggressive with it. And Impact was one of the biggest Udyr players, as he just barely gets out of the chain while Boogie was kind of around the area. Starting oh, my block here on the invade. Yeah, he gets a ward in. Fake got getting ignited by Impact. Might doesn't have flash from before. Impact the last harpoon, the comet. Oh, it's not enough. Thank God Liz with a sliver of HP. Oof, I really so wanted to shout Kobe there, but he did not get the kill. <laughs> <laughs> Almost at the long range. Would have been good. Uh, I think in that invade though, you do see the difference between obviously when Umti was able to go into the opposing jungler, he had that pushing wave. Here, uh, Boogie did not have the same coming out of Fake God and Impact is able to actually punish on the rumble on the top side. 
teleport forced by insanity as he's going to use it to get this back in starting off lane thanks to that first blood kill not only has a tear to his name but also that codex ap8 so far not punished with the lack of flash yet but boogie still has his flash available i wonder if around that level six timer boogie is going to try to look in and really nail ap8 yeah, it looks like now hovering around the dragon here with the respawn. They get Scuttle Crab. They've got Zazel moving. Mid lane target. Oh, Zazel was spotted though by yeah. Umti. That might just give APA the heads up that he needs to stay safe and just hover on the left side of the lane. But Boogie, it's not going to be. The lane is too big now this season, guys. Yeah, a little bit of vision goes a long way there. APA just hovering to the top side after they caught sight of Zazel. Uh, Umti is getting really yeah. aggressive into the face, but Boogie is just right there to aid him. Umti, I don't know if he's got backup here. Core JJ hooks him in with the dredge line. Isn't enough. Yon's going to keep him safe as now. APA floats on in. Boogie forced to flash. The Ignite ticking down. That's the kill over the Core JJ. Insanity falls as well. Team Liquid end up big as the Falling Star does not clip Zazel when he gets out. Yeah, I was wondering if he went in a little too early there because you saw them rotating up from bot side. Wasn't sure if they were going to get in there in time. Another thing I do want to point out about this TL team overall, Umti has also the highest first Drake percentage of any jungler in the league at 75%. And look at this. This is pure chat energy. He walks <laughs> over the ward into enemy jungle, lands the W, and then you see the collapse from both lanes here. Aurelian Soul coming down to shortly follow Insanity. The critical part, though, is Core, JJ, and Yawn. The bottom lane comes up. They hit Umpty with the heal. They're able to focus down Boogie. He dies to Core JJ's Ignite. If you're a jungler looking to have a very high forward percentage, get you a support like Core JJ. He's <laughs> going to be there to back you up. That bottom lane made all the difference. And this early aggression is very reminiscent of what we came to know Team Liquid as as of last summer's split when yep. Pioshek was on that roster. And then a lot of the questions around this roster going into the spring split after the first round round is like, well, it seems like if they don't play to scale, they're not winning games because every time they went for early game compositions, it fell flat. So far, it's a good start. Yeah, and here we also see Umti on the grubs. Going back to just tracking general things, I think uh, I think Umti also has the highest, uh, or TL has the highest percentage of grubs taken in the LCS as well at 60. All right, well, Boogie right now currently counter jungling while you take those grubs. Red buff down, really clocking up the numbers. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think you're catching up to me now. He, well, he, a lot of times, young junglers have begun to use the grubs as bait. I really like this strategy because not only can you counter jungle, but you can dive bottom lane as well, which is really one of the main focal points for was, Shopify Rebellion. That was a really good CC combo. Yon's uh, root there connected with Core JJ's dredge line and made him take one or two turret shots there. But Boogie looking for the dive is just going to pressure them off and make sure that they cannot threaten Zazel and B-Boy as they try to crash this wave in. Yeah, it looks like Zazel stepped in a little too far what? forward. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> That was Yon is also, oh, man. Yon is also uh, confused as to what happened there. I, I, I guess he was trying to look for the blade collar root, but he didn't have enough feathers, or maybe it expired. I'm, I would have to take a look back at that, but that's really unfortunate because now B Boy doesn't have a flash. Yeah, and now Umti is on this top side of the jungle once again, taking advantage of the fact that that impact is already at the point where he's proxy farming. And then meanwhile, APA is in a really solid position in this mid lane now. Uh, they didn't do much to punish that really early flash blown super early on in the game. And then since then, I think Umti has done a really good job of playing around TL's lanes. Yeah, I mean, you know, sorry for B-Boy, but he, like, he had his, he used his blade collar there. That was a flash blade collar and he just missed. Uh, we'll get a replay on there. There we go again. Oh, okay, so they're la they lay down the feathers, keep track of where the feathers are, because they're getting a big chunk here onto Rakan. Well, eyes I are mean, all that's, on that's B-Boy. I mean, that's not the part that they yeah. were looking for. Yeah, it's a little, a little early, here. but it, it comes up after Boogie disengages here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still feathers on the ground. And then you'll see him pull him back, too. Even with the spectator client, you'll still see this. Yep. There he goes. Oh. He just misses. Oof. Yeah, and that, like, even before that had happened, you could tell that they were kind of setting up for the dive, exactly like you said, Kobe. Uh, Boogie was rotating down. Uh, it was looking like they had a really good setup, and they just timed it a little too early, in my opinion. A quick check-in, though, at nine minutes. We still have five more to go before we finish our clocks on the forward percentage. Yeah, where are you I, at, Kobe? I'm at 53.81 seconds. I'm at a minute and... Oh, wow. <laughs> a minute and 27. Okay. 
Engage into the jungle. Core JJ lining them all up with a depth charge. Multiple knockups here. Boogie might just fall here to Umti. He gets the Gromp, but he loses his life for it as Bevo and Zazel now might be in trouble. There's a lot of members here from Team Liquid. The wave is not quite shoved in, so looks like no threat here. Yep, and uh, that's a, some more minutes on the clock for me. Uh, one thing I think that has been going on, again, Umti recognizing when he can go in off of general wave push as Core JJ goes in. Dredgeline connects, Zazel goes back in, but loses a lot of HP on the Dread off of it. Yon and Core JJ prepping this wave, but Umti is already pathing towards the top side of the map, so it should just give them the opportunity to maybe look for a reset here, but a dr another Dredgeline connects. A lot of damage from both Yon and Core JJ. That's the Featherstorm being forced by this Team Liquid bot lane, and now they're, they're doing a solid job so far. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, critical timing here when Dragon is going to come up pretty soon. Dragon will come up before that ulti does come up from B-Boy. Core J definitely one of the best at timing that. Going for minion kills and then hooking right after the minion dies. Gets the pretty big cooldown out there. And it's because he used his flash to, to attempt that blade caller earlier too, it means that is going to be a very vulnerable Zaya. Yeah, and we'll see what TL are looking to do on this top side. We do have Grubs spawning soon. Once again, Umti taking advantage of their vision uh, and pushing waves to steal that chicken camp once again. Um, but it looks like he's just going to go path back towards bot. Impact still has push in mid, and APA is pushing, or uh, in top, and APA is pushing out this wave in mid. Yep, Dragon just spawned here. Boogie is hovering APA and Insanity right now. He's very low, but he has Falling Star just to push Insanity back. He has Teleport so he can recall, look for the TP in case Team Liquid need it to secure this Dragon. But because of the bot lane pressure that Yon and Core JJ have been relentlessly being able to create against Zazel and B-Voy, this second Dragon is free for Team Liquid. Yeah, and Team Liquid's objective focus in this game has been quite good. We heard Jat uh, speaking about their lane assignments in that C9 game. TL have, uh, despite their, you know, their kind of 500 record, have had really good runs of focused macro play, uh, as we've kind of attributed to Coach Spawn, who's a very macro-focused coach. Um, but you see it here in this game as well, off of, obviously, APA's Aurelian Soul and Impact's Rumble. I have a lot of credit to APA as well because now. No. Oh, Q flash! <laughs> Caster curse from Q Kobe! APA, I'm sorry, brother, but that's the trade of the deal and no way to escape. Blame Kobe for that one. Uh, a lot of credit to him, but. More fighting, world ender, equalizer, impact, flashing away at the last critical second. Umpty dashes in and secures the kill for Team Liquid. All right, solo laner for a solo laner there. They get the kill. Meanwhile, Shopify trying to deny grubs to Team Liquid. TL did get the first three, so Boogie only gets one. Five is still really good being able to spawn those Void Mites, so Umti's gonna turn around and go for it. Yeah. Aurelian Soul heads right back out. That's Leandri's completed for APA. It's a little tricky. Fake God has TP as well, can join the fight. It would have the TP to a turret, but, oh, actually, yeah, Unleash Teleport at 10 minutes, my bad. As Fake God ensures that these grubs should go over to Shopify Rebellion Team Liquid, Three on the bottom side of this river. APA is following up as fast as he can, but it looks like these grubs should go securely over to Shopify. Yeah, and that was a really good timing window for Shopify to find, right? As soon as the Aureli they get the Aurelian Soul, they're like, okay, we can rotate up, deny the grub stacking from uh, TL. Uh, obviously now TL are fighting back with a little bit of a push in mid lane here, and we'll see if they want to engage. A little Nothing. decent fighting there. I thought I thought it was about to break out, but you were ready. You were ready. You're like punched <laughs> over, you know, like kind of like us with the stopwatches. Yeah, we were initially. <laughs> As they bounce on this tower, uh, I mean, the extra little bit of two damage is gonna help, even though they didn't get any more than the first three there for Team Liquid. An even split on the grubs. They still get a turret plate here, and the thing I was going to compliment APA for was still his Stardust uh, stacking on the new Aurelian Soul. Had been pretty good at that. He's at 115 right now already uh -oh. as they go for the invade. Zazel does have Flash, already uses it, and Battle Dance is away to safety. That's a summoner spell gone. And ladies and gentlemen, we are at 14 minutes. Final clock reads, what do we got? Okay, I'm, I'm still at my 127. I'm gonna come clean though. Because I was so distracted from the stopwatch thing, I kept it going during the replay when we weren't 100% sure where Fuki was, if he was still in enemy jungle. Where? I ended up with one minute and 31 seconds. Okay, so you still are ahead. 
Either way. I won. We're at 14 minutes. And um, Chat. Umti is the counter jungle king. I believe, I believe Chat predicted Umti as well. It was a landslide. Job, so Chad. congrats to Chat and Emily. As now our counter jungling little race was fun. Even with my slight stat padding of <laughs> <the> play timer. <laughs> Good try, Kobe. Uh, but no, I think uh, if there's one thing that Umti has been really good at it's again like TL's objective focus just generally they do have these really good runs of play and a lot of it starts around when umti realizes he can invade uh get some camps for himself and then also keep track of timers like the grubs and the drake early now it's gonna be really fun to track as they play out the aurelian soul later on uh you know how roam heavy apa does get because that was his favorite style of play when he, he played so much Aurelian Soul pre-rework, and now they've got him in the side lane. He's still stacking up his dust down there while the rest of the team is taking another one of these neutral objectives here for Team Liquid. Yeah, I was going to say, this is they kind of another one of those lane assignments, right, where they they rotate um, up to be able to take this. Aurelian Soul was down on the bot side of the map. They have really good vision coverage across the board, so they can see where Shopify are going. And Shopify kind of reset, which allows TL to come in and take this Herald for themselves. Yeah, really going to help out with a Rome Heavy playstyle. I know the Herald ensuring that they can finish up another one of the outer towers. Looks like Impact will take top side, so you Definitely will be able to get mid at some point there for Team Liquid. Topside also just barely standing, so they will be able to blow up the map pretty pretty quickly towards the mid game here. And just to give some stats for the ASOL hype that we're giving for APA, including Amateur and including all these pre-work ASOL games, he had 38, his fourth most played of his entire career as Impact is about to get dove. Three people on top side here. Zazel starts off with the quickness into the grand entrance, and it's just the CC train and the damage unleashed from Fake God as Zazel Ooh. does go down. Impact was able to find the last ticking blow from Ignite and Equalizer. It's a one for one trade. Yeah, I mean, it's really good of Impact to take that. And meanwhile, in the mid lane, TL are actually able to take advantage. Not only did Impact get the one for one in the top side, but they're crashing onto this tier two turret, and with the mites. They no, they're not going to be able to take it down it yet. It was close. It was close. But they definitely got one full turret and some change on the second one. So it's going to make that next push even easier as the third dragon of the game has already spawned. Team Liquid are sh stronger in this bottom side of the jungle. They have greater positioning, and they should be able to take it for free. Yeah, especially since, you know, they've got mid lane and bottom lane pushing. You can just rotate ASOL over. And ASOL, with the AOE control you have with a charged up ultimate, with your singularity, you can cut off these entrances coming up to Dragon. So Shopify make a smart call. They don't want to contest number three, and they'll wait for the actual Dragon Soul fight. They're just going to keep on trying to split push keep on trying to counter jungle, you know, gets Boogie there in the blue side jungle, taking away the little bits of jungle camps that he that he still can. Meanwhile, TL will be happy to keep up their timer here on the Dragons. They've got the nice gold lead. They've got the stacking ASOL. Yeah, I mean, off of that run of play, right? You had ASOL and bot getting bot tier one. They were able to rotate down, have full control of Dragon um, after crashing the Herald mid, right? So it was perfectly set up on this bot side, and it was all off of kind of Shopify overloading that top side, which isn't even a bad idea, right? It's just Impact also got the one-for-one -one trade kill, and TL, because they have such good map control, are able to get so much in the mid and bot side of the map. Just under 20 minutes into the game, Baron hasn't spawned quite yet, but Team Liquid very strong on the map. 3,000 gold ahead as Umti is going to go in, get some poke down on Azazel, just force him back as they start to establish vision control way ahead of time before this Baron spawns. And then TL could get really aggressive with it. Umti once again leading the charge in. He's got plenty of backup. They have a Senna coming over as well. Him plus Core JJ rotating over to the split push train. APA has pushed it all the way up to the tower. It's only going to take him couple of autos to knock this thing over. Meanwhile, the split push for Shopify as Fake God tries to answer on the bottom side, should be able to get that turret. And it, while he does have a teleport, him teleporting into these fights right now would be really dangerous because Shopify, it, it, it's very difficult for them to actually come from multiple angles and they didn't have any super deep wards to teleport on either. So he actually doesn't even finish that, that turret and he's gonna get chased down. 
This could be trouble for Fake God. No turret to protect him. The rest of Shopify are trying to rally around and provide him a route of escape. Boogie thinking that maybe they can force this fight, but they're not in range quite yet. They still have a turret to defend themselves here. Yon throwing out the Pepega Frog once again, as he is just making sure that his laners stay safe. Yeah, and meanwhile, fi TL finally do get that uh, tier one turret on top side. That was kind of a good look at a collapse from Shopify, but it also just shows again with the vision control that TL have and kind of their coordination in this game thus far. Yon's able to rotate down. Impact is easily able to clear and, and go back to turret. Um, so Shopify aren't able to get anything off of it. I just want to point out here that Team Liquid, it's been a very light game in terms of just um, a lot of action. We had a lot of it during the first 14 minutes, but now it's been very calm, it's very collected and very calculated for them. You've already pointed out that it's been the macro that has allowed them to be successful so far. But even with the deficits that APA was experiencing with the focus, he's still up in gold against Insanity. This gold, this gold advantage is carrying them through forward. And Shopify, I feel like they're just falling behind and they can't really find a way back in this game. They're always being the reactive rather than the progr uh, the proactive. And then the one big thing that Team Liquid really did this game that all the other teams that they upset did poorly was attack the bot lane. Every time B-Boy and Zazel were focused down, they fumbled a dive, they fumbled a play. Yawn and Core JJ tested the limits, never got the kills, but they always pushed them out of lane. Now it's gonna be really hard for them to regain territory. APA roams up to the top side, finishes up that wave super quickly. They have Big advantages uh, in pushing out these waves. Rumble on bottom side as well. Honestly, I think Shopify have to just try and go for one of these picks. Mm -hmm. uh, make use of Boogie's ultimate and maybe maybe Zazel can find something too there to pick somebody off because TL have a really actually sturdy five on five as well. Umpty front line, you know, they've got Core JJ and the giant ASOL ultimate that AP has been holding this whole time. Just, very ominous yeah. and he's gonna keep hold of that one until the dragon soul fight comes up it's gonna be up to shopify to try and work something around that or maybe get some cooldowns before that dragon comes up yeah it looks like now tl are actually the ones setting up not necessarily for a pick but just to chew through this Watch tier where, two turret in mid look where boogie is he is waiting for them to overextend and wants to come in from a flank position because he knows that at this point in the game fighting a five on five front to back would be super hard losing for shopify it has to be about the creative angles at which you can cause disruption in this team but team liquid don't bite off more than they can chew they back off immediately and it's so dangerous if shopify actually try and contest dragon soul from bottom lane it's really small now, the, the way that they squished up the jungle. So you pretty much have to do mid trial Whoa. if you're going to contest one of those objectives. Shopify don't want to give them the chance to set up first, though. And they force the issue on Baron. They will make Team Liquid charge at them. Dawning Shadow comes through, gets a decent chunk out of Shopify Rebellion as well. Umpty dashes in. Fake God forced to peel back. The equalizer comes through. Fake God taking a lot of damage. Here comes Boogie over the top, trying to prevent Yon from doing damage. APA's backing him up. Boogie, one last ditch effort, but he still goes down. Meanwhile, Team Liquid cleaned up the rest of the fight on the back half. A triple four impact, and this Baron belongs to Team Liquid. APA dropped an absolute nuke there with the <laughs> ASOL ultimate. That's Baron. No deaths for TL. Well, Emily. Yeah, thanks Emily. for the leash, you know? <laughs> thanks for the leash, Shopify. Uh, I mean, again, we've talked about how this was set up by the early game that TL had, right? Like playing around their lanes, playing around their vision, focusing neutral objectives. I don't even necessarily hate this call from Shopify, right? Like they're doing it on a reset. They think they can burn it down. But as we already touched upon, they really do not want to go up against this TL team in a 5v5. And we just saw exactly why as we go into the replay. Okay, so the Dawning Shadow is early. They're looking at how close the timing is on Baron. And it's at 4.5k, so you can't continue to burn it. It's perfect timing for them to go for this counter. Yep, and as we oh. saw, oh, here we go. We get to Ooh. see it from orbit. The star dropping. Pure cinema, baby. Uh, yeah, I love the effects on the on the actual impact. And speaking of impact, great segue. Uh, that rumble ult also did a lot to soften yeah. them up as well. And obviously, having a rumble ult when you're taking on Baron Pit is always a great thing to have. 
APA dropping the Singularity, just making it slower for Shopify Rebellion to rotate over to this inhibitor tower. They've already made short work of it, taking more than half of its HP. Meanwhile, Impact is pushing in the mid lane. Shopify Rebellion down almost 8,000 gold, running out of options as Team Liquid siege into their base. All right. ASOL, people have had a frustrating time sieging against the ASOL, but it's also tr frustrating trying to defend against it. Especially with the extra Senna here uh, on the bottom side. Extra range there. Yawn able to get inside. The Baroned up minions on the inhibitor. Umpty wants a scrap. They're, yeah. they're engaging and they want to force the fight to end this game. They already find one, two, easily back to back. That's the double for Yawn. The equalizer comes through. Featherstorm to dodge on the damage. The Blade Caller roots APN his tracks, but he pops the stasis to keep himself alive. TO have done enough to be able to walk away with this inhibitor on their side, and they're going to look for more. And they're they gonna should, get They more. should be able to close out, right? Yeah, Unless two, they, two yeah. inhibitors here. Baroned up minions coming down. This should be it. A singularity dropped once again. APA just keeping them at a bay. Team Liquid now pushing in with super minions coming through through two lanes very soon as they just have to hold the line. Fake God is respawning in the next three seconds. It may have been too long for Team Liquid to close this game out. It looks like they'll take the reset here, but a teleport is coming in. Last ditch effort from Shopify. If they can find someone to get back in this game, it has to be now. He finds APA, forced a flash, but the root from Yawn keeps Fake God at a distance. They blast go back in. Umpty says, go, baby. We win these every single time. Yawn finds the first one on a Fake God. Seizel will fall next. It's another double. Boogie can't decide whether he wants to go in or back out. Interrupts. Sees and assist over the wall. Stops APA, but before he falls, he's still Shockwave will stop them for now, but Insanity cannot stop Team Liquid from closing out this game. As someone who watched a lot of Umpty in L his LCK career, right, it's just great to see him go in, engage on something like the Xin Zhao. He loves champs like this to just kind of go in and lead his team. The Fearless Admiral once again from Korea comes in with Team Liquid and leads them to another victory. The classic. Blast Cone, Zin Zhao, <laughs> Insect Play. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. Blast Cone's into the middle of the team, splits them all up with the Zin Zhao ultimate. And that's, I guess we'll end the game then. They yeah. were going to reset, but decided, you know what? We're gonna fight it out. Shopify went for their teleport. TL though, from beginning to end, controlled this game. The only real hiccup was actually the first blood where yeah. <laughs> after Upti burn, burning his flash, kept on with the counter jungling and then and then went down as the first blood. But since that point, they, they bounced right back, controlled those neutral objectives, controlled the team fights. Azel stacking up, pushing out the side wave. Very coordinated and strong play here from Team Liquid. And with that,